So we finally developed all the tools that we need to move on and, and work through the details of curve sketching. Um, now, uh, some people are maybe slightly annoyed and, and possibly with some justification that we even bother with curve sketching at all um, when there are all sorts of perfectly good technological solutions available um, to tell us what the graph of a function looks like, you know, at, at the click of a button or at least, you know, a few keystrokes. Um, and, of course, the, the reason we're doing this by hand is, is to try and, and get a better understanding for what's going on. Try to understand, like, how, how is the computer actually creating those plots? Are they just kind of, you know, um, taking sample points every, you know, x equals 0 0.1, connecting the dots, probably something like that, uh, you know, or, or are they being a little bit more sophisticated, exactly what's going on, right? And, and also, it's important to understand, you know, what the first derivative tells you, what the second derivative tells you, so you can analyze situations, right? And, and you know, if you have data that maybe isn't coming from some simple, well-behaved polynomial function, right, you might still want to be able to look at your data and, and look at trends and understand what's going on. And so curve sketching lays a foundation for sort of, you know, understanding at a fairly fundamental level what's going on with behavior of functions, right? Um, you might be dealing with functions that are more complicated and you still need to analyze them. Now, to put together the, this graph of a function, there, there are a number of things that you need to do, right? I've put this checklist here on the side. We'll refer to this for each problem that we look at. Um, the original function, before you even take a derivative, and we've seen this a bit already, uh, you get a fair amount of information from that original function, right? Um, you can probably figure out where the x and y intercepts are. Um, Maybe not for this cubic. Well, the y-intercept we can figure out, right? f of 0, you can get that right away, right? Um, we can see that f, f of 0 is equal to 5. Right? That's the point that we can plot. Five. I'm not even going to bother putting a scale. Um, we'll see why once we do a few examples. You don't want to commit yourself to a to, to a scale, um, you, you just want to kind of get an idea of what these things look like. If you try to be too accurate, your graph is usually going to end up looking bad. Um, so don't even put a scale in, just label points as you go along, right? So we might label that this is 0, 5. Leave it at that, okay? Asymptotes. Well, it's a polynomial. There are no asymptotes, horizontal or vertical, so we don't have to worry about that, right? The domain is everything. Uh, symmetry. For a polynomial, you only have symmetry if all the terms are either all odd degree or all even degree. If you have all odd powers, you have an odd function. If you have all even powers, you have an even function. That's not the case here, um, so we don't have symmetry, right? So for this polynomial function, there's not a lot that we can, we can get just from the function itself, right? Um, X-intercepts are difficult because you'd have to figure out, you know, how to factor a cubic, and it's quite likely that the roots of that cubic aren't even rational roots, in which case you're not going to be able to find them by hand. Okay, so once you feel like you've gotten everything that you can get out of the original function, we move on to the first derivative. Okay, so 3 times 3 gives me 9x squared minus 20x plus 7. Okay, so that's a quadratic, but it's not a quadratic that factors particularly nicely, right? f prime of x equals 0 for, let's see, x is going to be 20. Right, minus b, right. plus or minus uh, b squared, 400 minus 4 times 9 times 7, okay, over 2 times 9. All right, it's a bit of work, right? Um, let's see, maybe we should pull out our calculators, or let's see, 4 times 9 is 36 times 7, carry the 4, right, uh, 21 
252. Okay, so this is going to be 20 plus or minus square root of uh, 148 over 18. And let's see, oh, and 148 is a, is a multiple of 4, right? Um, so we can, we can work out what that is. Um, let's see. 4 goes into 148. Let's see, 3 times 28, 37. Okay. Um, so this is 2 root 37. And then we divide everything by 2. We've got 10 plus or minus root 37 over 9. Bet you wish you'd use the calculator for this, right? Um, now, 37 is just a little bit bigger than 36, right? Which is, and the square root of 36 is 6. Um, so this is about 10 plus or minus. So this is around uh, 16 over 9 or 4 over 9, somewhere around there, right? Um, okay. So we can, we can approximate those values if we have to. Okay. So we've got that. Um, we can also work out, we plot these two zeros, right? And I'm, we're not going to even worry about writing down the exact values. Um, but what we do know is that this is a quadratic, you know, opening upwards. So we know that it's got to be positive outside the roots, negative inside, right? So now we know that we've got a function which is increasing until we hit. So this one here, which is 10 minus root 37 over, over 9, the one that's a little bit less than a half. Okay. And then, so, so this is going to be, right, what happens there? This is going to be increasing to decreasing. That's going to be a max. Okay. Then decreasing to increasing. So here we have a min. Right, the min at 10 plus root 37 over 9. So we have that. Okay. So we have those values. So let's see. So somewhere over here, we mark those off, right? So we've got we've got that first critical number. It's going to increase um, probably up to about there. And then it's going to decrease. We get that second critical number here, which is not quite two, right? Um, so let's say that's at about a half. Here's one, here's two. So the other critical number is somewhere around here, right? Something like that. Okay. We plot those points. Uh, now, uh, you, of course, should take out a calculator, plug these numbers into the original function see what the corresponding y values are. Uh, that's done in the textbook for you, so if you want to look up the values in the textbook, you'll find them there. Now we move on to the second derivative. Second derivative is going to be 18x minus 20. Okay? So f double prime of x equals 0 for x is 20 over 19 or 10 over 9. So a little bit bigger than 1. Right? So if you're looking at a number line for the second derivative, we've got an inflection point at 10 over 9. If x is bigger than 10 over 9, that's going to make this whole thing bigger, right? So we're going to have positive here and negative over there, right? You can do test values there if you like. Okay, so now we know that if we wanted to write down all the intervals, right? So we know that our function is going to be increasing for minus infinity up to this first critical number about here, okay? It's going to be decreasing between the two critical numbers, between here and here, right? And then it's going to be increasing again. We also know that it's going to be, let's mark off that inflection point. So that inflection point is somewhere around here, right? So what we're going to get is something which is 
increasing, but concave down until we hit that. So we're gonna go like this. So it's increasing, concave down, something like that. We hit our maximum. Now we're decreasing, we're still concave down. We hit our inflection point. Now we're concave up, but decreasing until we hit our minimum. Now we're concave up and increasing, All right? So we get something that looks roughly like this, right? And exact details are probably not perfect, right? We didn't necessarily get the scale right. But if we label those points, and maybe I, I know I should label them, but they're kind of gross, so maybe we'll, we'll skip labeling those points. Um, but generally, as long as you label those points, right, the, the critical numbers, critical points, the inflection points, put those on your graph, indicate where they are, and, and then don't, don't fuss too much about getting the scale perfect or anything like that, because usually, usually the graph doesn't even look good if you get the scale right. It's okay to, to throw off the scale to get a nicer looking graph. Okay. So there's a polynomial. Um, generally, polynomials are pretty straightforward. What makes this one difficult is that we didn't get nice solutions for the critical numbers, right? Um, problems you might see on, let's say, like a test are probably designed so that you, know, you find the critical numbers and they're at minus 1 and plus 2, and it's pretty easy to work things out. Um, here, we, we made the numbers a little bit more challenging because, in principle, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to deal with the hard numbers as long as you at least have a calculator handy.